Hi, this is George Woodbury from the College of Sequoias, and this video goes over a few introductory statistics probability problems. The book we're using is Sullivan's third edition intro stat textbook. Problem 1. For a parallel structure of identical components, the system can succeed if at least one of the components succeeds. Assume that the components fail independently of each other, and that each component has a 0.17 probability of failure. Part A. What's the probability that a parallel structure with two identical components will succeed? Okay, I've gone ahead and recorded the probabilities at the top of the screen. The probability a component fails is 0.17. The probability it succeeds is 0.83. And we're looking for the probability that at least one of them succeeds. That way the entire process will be considered a success. Remember that the probability of at least one whenever we see at least one, we need to remember that the, that the complement of that event zero successes will be easier to calculate. So we're going to calculate the probability of zero successes and subtract from one. Keep in mind that zero successes is the same as two failures. Multiply the probability of failure by itself and subtract from one and we get a probability of 0.9711. In the next problem we need to determine how many components are needed so that the probability system will succeed with a probability greater than 0.9999. Let's go back to the last screen for a moment. Remember that probability was 0.9711 and that was for two components. So we're going to start repeating this with three trials and then with four and we'll just keep going until we reach a probability greater than 0.9999. For three components 1 minus 0.17 cubed is not large enough. Repeat it again with 4, 5, and finally it works with 6 components giving us a probability higher than 0.9999. Moving on to the second problem, a golf course architect has 6 linden trees, 5 white birch trees, and 2 bald cypress trees to plant in a row along a fairway. We're trying to determine how many different ways the landscaper can plant the trees in a row. First, we note there are 13 trees in total, 6, 5, and 2 of the three individual types. The numerator of our calculation will be the number of ways to arrange any 13 trees, which is 13 factorial. For the denominator, we're going to have to divide out the repeated combinations for each type of tree. There would be 6 factorial for the first type, 5 factorial for the second, and 2 factorial for the third. Here's the calculation. Uh, a quick calculator note. What you want to try to do is de cal determine 13 factorial on your calculator. Divide by 6 factorial first. Then, after you push equals, divide by 5 factorial second, and finally by 2 factorial again. That will get you the final result of 36,036. Suppose a compact disc you just purchased has 11 tracks. You like three of the songs. With the random feature on your CD player, 11 songs are played once in order. Find the probability that the first two songs played, you like both of them. There's a summary of our totals, three that you like, eight you dislike, for a total of 11. The probability you like the first one, there are three you like out of 11 total. When we select that one that you like, that leaves two that you like out of 10 total. When we multiply these two fractions and reduce to lowest terms, we get three out of 55. Now let's go ahead and find the probability that you like neither of the first two songs. Uh, the key number here is the 8 that you dislike. The probability you dislike the first song is 8 out of 11, and we multiply that by the probability you dislike the second song, which is 7 
of the remaining 10. Multiply, reduce the lowest terms, and we get 28 over 55. Finally, we're going to calculate the probability that you liked exactly one of those songs. There are a couple of ways this could happen. First, we'll calculate the probability you like the first, dislike the second. There's a 3 out of 11 chance you like the first. At that point, there still are 8 songs that you dislike of the 10 that remain on the CD. Now we'll move on to the other order, where you dislike the first but like the second. Notice that the numerators here have changed places. There's an 8 and 11 chance that you dislike the first, and of the 3 that you like, there are 10 songs left on the CD. At this point, we'll go ahead and add these two probabilities together to get 24 out of 55. Now we're going to go back through, the <clears throat> through these th three problems, adding in the idea that the songs can be replayed before reaching the end of the CD. Basically, this is sampling with replacement. To find the probability you like the first two songs, you like three of the 11. When the next song is generated, there are still three songs that you like of the 11 in the, on the CD. Multiply that out to get 9 out of 121. Let's try the probability that you dislike both. Instead of 3 out of 11, this fraction we'll work with is 8 out of 11. Multiply straight across to get 64 out of 121. We'll finish this problem by finding the probability you like exactly one song Again, there are two orders. Here's the probability of the first order. You like three of the 11 songs. The CD player shuffles the selections, and you have an 8 out of 11 chance that you dislike the next one. Reversing the order, we also get 24 out of 121. Adding those together, we're left with 48 out of 121. On to the last problem for the day. The grade appeal process at a university requires that a jury be structured by selecting eight individuals randomly from a pool of nine students and nine faculty. What's the probability of selecting a jury of all students? To find the probability, the numerator is going to be the number of ways to select eight jurors from the nine students. This is a combination. We're selecting eight out of nine there's no repetition, and the order of selection doesn't matter. The first person selected is on the jury, the second person selected is on the jury, and so on. The denominator for the probability will be the number of ways that we can select eight jurors from 18 people. The nine students and the nine faculty combined together give us a jury pool of 18 people. So rather than nine C8 from the first part, now we're looking at 18 C8. Okay. So here's the calculation. Do each combination separately. 9 C8 is equal to 9. 18 C8 is equal to 43,758, giving us a probability of approximately 0 0.00021. Part B of this problem same setup except this time we're looking for the probability of getting a jury of all faculty same setup the number of ways to select eight of the nine faculty is nine c8 we get the same exact calculation finally this time we're looking for the probability of selecting a jury with six students and two faculty well we start off by determining the number of ways that we can select six of the nine students. Okay. That's a combination. Six of the nine students, and we're going to multiply that by the number of ways to select two of the nine faculty. Two. of the nine faculty. The denominator is going to be the same here, 18C8. So
So here's the calculation. On the calculator, you'll do 9C6 first. Multiply that by the result of 9C2, and then divide by 18C8. Here is an intermediate step shown. The final result is 0 0.06911. Okay, if you have any questions or comments on these problems, or if there are any other probability problems that you'd like to see worked out, you can go ahead and reach me through the contact page on my website, and that's at georgewoodbury.com. Thanks for watching, and good luck.